screen. All right, so it should be recording. Yeah, All it right. says it in the top right. Perfect. So everybody, go ahead. Uh, welcome, I guess, to the to the second influence to influence <laughs> podcast. Uh, I guess you know for, after the first episode with Fabrice, it kind of kicked off like really, really well. And uh, someone commented, they're like, I got to be up next. And I was like, come on, of you course. Oh, of course. <laughs> so the person I'm about to introduce to you, I'm going to talk a little bit about him and then I'm going to let him talk. But yeah, this is just a great opportunity. Again, we say it every time. Um, we have, you know, again, I hope everyone's doing, you know, doing good right now. It's April 27th. It's crazy to think we've been in the house since March 13th. But we were just talking before this, like, we're still working. We got, we're still working oh, on yeah. our things. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, so Noah Baird. I know him as Fleek. I know him as you already know him. Uh, but he's an artist, entrepreneur. He's part of uh, the group called The Lost Generation, which if you have yeah. not heard, if you have not heard their music, they, first of all, this, they were my first, so I've never been to a concert. They were my, sorry, they were my first concert that I went to last yes, summer sir. And, at the Lincoln Theater. And that was a movie because you literally had a Lincoln Theater packed wall to wall. And the thing that I love about Noah is that like, when he says something, he'll do it. Like, and that's like a very small thing to some people, but it's the whole thing you got to remember. Like, if you say something, you got to do it. So, being part of Lost Generation, he's been featured in No Jumper. They also won Carolina Music Award for the best yeah. group. So, um, yeah, man, no, I mean, dude, you know, like, welcome. Who are you, man? Like, you know, like, again, there's people who know you, people who think they know you. So, who are you? Yeah. Uh, well, first off, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Uh, definitely glad to be on this and help you out. My brother, Sushi. And, uh, it. But my name is Noah. Like you said, I'm a part of a group called The Lost Generation. Um, I'm an artist, but I also do shows and stuff like that. But we'll get into that. Um, yeah. And excited to talk to you guys today. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, I mean, like, it's cool because <laughs> I've known, we've known each other for what, three, four years now, but really gotten to know each other the past two years. So it's cool, like seeing, you know, we have like the same paths because we used to work together at the Y, but then it's like we have paths and we may not see each other every day, but then when we come together, of course, you know, we catch up and everything like that, but it's just amazing seeing someone doing things that like you would imagine. Because like think about all the people who want to have an artist career, whether it's yeah. creating actual like drawing on art or painting, but doing music and, you know, First of all, doing the first song, you know, I'm pretty sure the first song was hard mm -hmm. and then the multiple. But um, so, yeah, I mean, like where, what was, you know, before you got to where you are right now. Right. So like what was the upbringing of, you know, Noah? Like, let us know, you know, how's family? Where are you from? Um, so I was born in Cocoa Beach, Florida, what? actually a little beach boy. Yes, sir. <laughs> but uh, lived there till I was eight. And then I had some family that lived in Kentucky. So it moved to Richmond. It's like 30 minutes from Lexington basically like the equivalent to like Wake Forest to Raleigh um, type of thing. Went through like third to like middle school there. And then when I was about to start high school, all my family from Kentucky moved to North Carolina mm -hmm. and we just followed suit. And I ended up here and I've been here since my freshman year of high school in like 2012. Um, how music and stuff started was honestly, I used to play football my whole entire life. My uh -huh. favorite sport played what it position? since I was in like the third grade. Uh -huh. um, but when I moved here, I actually messed my back up uh, my oh. freshman year and ne never got to play or nothing like that. And then uh, I seen my schedule for like second semester and they had thrown me in theater class, which I didn't <laughs> even want to take. I didn't even want to be in it. I literally was like, mom, why is this on my schedule? Like I was so mad. I was like, wow. why would I want to take theater class? Exactly. But I was like, whatever, it's probably easy. I'll give it a chance. And uh, I went in, and surprisingly, that's where I met Jaheel, who's also mm -hmm. in my group, and Brody. Um, and then Brody was already making music by himself as a solo artist. And then me and Jaheel convinced him to let us come over to his house and make a song. Mm -hmm. And then he finally gave in. We went over, and from then on out, it's when it all started, man, honestly. That's crazy. I mean, I know you summed it up very short, short but, like, first of all, with – I guess like moving around, how was that? Cause I mean, I'm kind of the same with you. Like when I came here from Kenya, I lived in California for a little bit, Texas for a little bit, Durham for, actually that's where I stayed when I first came to North Carolina, Durham. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Wakefield. So of course moving around, you you know, you make friends and then you don't, you know, then you have to leave. So like, I guess how was moving around for you? Like, was it hard kind of like adjusting to new areas or did you stay uh, by yourself? A little bit of both. Like, I guess like, 
the social media aspect didn't really pick up till I was in high school. Mm -hmm. So it's like I did lose a lot of like friends and stuff like that that I don't really keep in contact with because I wasn't on social media following nobody or nothing like that. Um, but honestly, we moving from Florida, I don't really remember much outside of just moving. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't really have many friends because I was so young. So it's not like I really lost anything. I wasn't too deeply invested in much. It was just like a change of scenery. Right. Um, then Kentucky, I was there for like a long time, had a bunch of friends. And like, I was honestly mad and upset when my mom said we were moving because I had just spent all this time making mm -hmm. new friends and finding new hobby and football and like all this other stuff. Um, but I knew, like, she felt it would be the best, and it was going to bring us near all the family. So I was like, whatever, I'll go. And I'm honestly blessed that it happened, because if it didn't, I wouldn't be where I am today. I would have never met the people I've met. I would have never been in music, and I honestly don't know what I would be doing. Yeah. So I just try to look at situations like that and just take it as it comes, go with the flow, and just adjust to whatever, like, the current circumstances, that like, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that's good. If that makes sense. Yeah, that does. And I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and again, it's cool because like I'm learning more about you as we go this, which is which is just so <laughs> cool. But like you said, you played football, and I I remember I uh, there was a time we used to play football with like our, you know in my uh, song song Lee. Oh, it's song. Yes. Uh, so yes, song uh. Nick Dennis and all of us used to play football by the Wakefield. If you if you know about this area, you know. Uh, middle school, we used to play football on the medium. And I remember there was one day uh, Colin Sanchez threw the football and someone, yeah, Colin said someone threw it on the other team and I intercepted it and I was like, oh, this is it. So I'm gunning it. So I'm playing against like football players and I'm just a little Kenyan boy who didn't even, took me years to learn how to throw football. Besides, I have never gotten hit so hard but I didn't understand what was happening. Um, I can't remember. I think it was Dennis. Some, someone hit me on my leg so I was in the air and then Nick Dennis jumped in the air. So literally I went... <laughs> <laughs> coming up like that, um, I don't know if I got hurt, bro. I, I ran home, cried. <laughs> that was that was tough. But with you with messing up like your back, like how you know, I'm pretty sure it wasn't like, oh, my back's hurt. Then let me go do something else. Like I'm pretty sure you had to go. There was a lot of mental, of course, a lot of physical. But you know, kind of like, what did you go through at that time? Yeah. Um, well, honestly, uh, like I came, I didn't really want to play offensive line anymore. I tried to play a different position. They're like, nah, you've had to go be with the lineman. I was like, okay, because regardless, I'm just the type of person I'm going to play my role. Mm -hmm. Whatever you feel like I'm going to be in, okay. Um, and at first it sucked because it was honestly a cheap shot because they had blown the whistle. We were doing like the pad drills where someone holds the pads and then they blow the whistle. You engage for like four or five seconds and then mm -hmm. you're supposed to let go. The next person comes up, blah, blah, blah. So I'm holding the pad. The senior big ass lineman comes up and is hitting it like I'm holding him, blah, 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 blah. Then they blow the whistle. So I like release my oh. strength and he keeps pushing. So oh. I like get flown off my feet and like the bottom of my back hits like the a metal, like the metal bar that holds the wheels that like oh. moves like the big ass thing. And like I was just done, bro. Like I was just like on the ground, just like done. And, like, I guess it really didn't affect me at first because I wasn't playing anyways. So it's not like I went from, like, this starter that's getting all this time and now I'm just not playing. Mm -hmm. It was more so just like, okay, well, I'm already not playing. Now my back's messed up. I, I'm just not – it's not fun for me anymore at this right. point. And uh, luckily enough, uh, I knew Jaheel, and he had helped me get into a play – Mm -hmm. And uh, so I ended up dropping football like midseason, turning my equipment in and just going to do this play to occupy my time instead. And then from there, I just fell in love with doing the theater shit. That's where I made all my friends with mm -hmm. and just thugged it. <laughs> but, I, and it's like I said, it's crazy because if that injury didn't happen, I would have never stopped playing football. Mm -hmm. and, and one then, thing I've noticed, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. I was going to say, like, I would have never stopped playing football and I would have never given music and none of this. Yeah, we would have never had so this conversation. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's all just, like, some universe connecting the dots type stuff. It's just wild. And that's one thing I've noticed that, like, you've, even that, like, when we worked together or when we played uh, staff sports, he was QB. Like, I've always noticed you always, and even when you're mentioning it, like, you you had that mentality where it's, like, you'll play the role that, you know, that need, needed to be, but even if you have to change, like, you don't, stop or give in like you always find something else to oh yeah like you said like occupy your time but not like not mindlessly but something that's gonna like be fruitful 
kind of like that. That makes sense. Oh yeah, and like even yeah. with that, like at the end of the day, I genuinely love football. So right. even if I want to play one position, as long as I'm playing, I'll mm-hmm. play whatever you want me to because I'm uh-huh. just happy to be playing football. <laughs> so it's like that's just how I look at it with anything. But yeah, yeah. So you mentioned so now we're at high school. You 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 starting to go you know in the studio to make a song. So. You gotta tell me how is that? How I've never actually been to studio. I've seen the studio a little bit because my brother used to do music a lot for like Kenya and stuff like that. But how is that? I mean, I know you probably still get the rush all the time when you're in the stew. But like, <laughs> tell me how is that like first experience when you finally, you know, you asked like it's like playing a sport. Like, hey, coach, let me on, let me on. Then the coach says, all right, it's your time to swing. You're like, oh crap. <laughs> no, yeah. So it was definitely like a little nervous because mm-hmm. I'm like, dang, like I'm really about to make a song that like, people can hear this. Like, how's it going to turn out uh, and stuff like that. But if, if you, have you heard the song One Train by ASAP Rocky? Like, I know it's a little, old, a little like, bit, a little bit. But so we actually used that instrumental and that was oh. the first song we ever made <laughs> was a One Train remix with uh-huh. me, Brody and Jaheel on it. Um, we were so hyped at the time, thought it was the best thing in the world. Uh-huh. We had this song. And then we were sitting there and we were like, all right, like, we're going to start a group up. Like, what should we call it? Uh-huh. And we just sat there, plotted, plotted, oh, plotted. And we were like, boom, the lost generation. Uh-huh. And since what's, then, it's been, it's been up. What's the, what's, I guess, what's the meaning behind the lost generation for those, for those who see it? Because, like, the group that you have is such a, it's such a cool group because, like, stereotypically you shouldn't be together you know you know what i mean no for but sure like, we're, all we're of you a blend are... of a lot of different personalities exactly. and people and everything yeah and it's cool because um, like when you come together and sorry it's like when you come together the music that you like when you're separate it's a whole cliche thing like when you're separate you're you're good but when you come together you're strong but literally mm-hmm. it's like when you're separate all of you are m- like masters at your crafts and you're still getting better but it's like when you come together you you create art <laughs> no of course um so what i'd say it means is like a lot of like all of us ended up in the group because we were lost in some way not necessarily lost in terms like we don't know what we're gonna do but just like trying to find ourselves and needed like a place to like you know i'm saying Mm -hmm. come together um and i feel like a lot of people struggle with that whether they don't know what they want to do in life or what they want to do who they if they don't have friends like just lost in some type of way and uh, we just try to provide people with the, like space and opportunity and through our music, like the emotion and the vibe of just like having fun, enjoying yourself, being happy and like knowing that like no matter what you're going through and no matter what could happen, that you're always welcome with us. Mm. And we want to be like the home per se for like everybody that's lost. Mm. And like that's the whole movement and the whole like thing we're trying to build is like, you might think you're lost, you're not lost to us, we love you for who you are. We like you for what you're not. Like, just come over on this side. Like, you've got a family here type of thing. And uh, that's, that's basically the whole, the whole movement behind it. It's just including people and just making people feel like they got somewhere to go, I guess. And that, um, that's, when you say that, too, I just, I just think about the, the, the concert at Lincoln Theater. Because if you looked in that place, we had there were moms there. <laughs> they were like, there were moms, they were kids. Like, they, it was literally, like, I don't know if there was a time. I think it was um, when you released, uh, I think it was towards the end, when you released Birthday. I think this was after Amelia was like, came out from the top. You were, when you were releasing Birthday, which was their recent album, if pretty much, if it's your birthday, you play that song every day. I don't care. That's the, that's the <laughs> only song you're allowed to play for the whole day. But, uh, I remember stopping and looking around and I'm like, dude, there is so many different people here that you would not think who would be here. But it was cool because everyone from the Y, we were like 20, 30 deep coming to like support. And then you just have everyone from different places. And it was just exactly like what you said, like people who it's just inviting everyone and having given people that outlet, which is important. Um, so that's big ups to you. So I guess, I mean, with all the genres that you could have gone to, you know, like why hip hop and rap? And of course, I'm not limiting you to that, but you know what shows you to you know to go in. No, the yeah, yeah. Right um, so when I was young, my dad would always play Santana. He's mm-hmm. like a Spanish guitarist, mm-hmm. if anyone's ever heard of him. Um, and that was like the first real introduction I got introduced to with music was like guitar, 
Like I'd go see live bands at like the beach with him and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one of his like best friends was a drummer and like gave me drumsticks. And I was like, okay, like I definitely <laughs> at some point would want to be the dude with the drumsticks like mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, and there we had a neighbor and I was like best friends with him. And I remember I was at his house one time and his parents were watching uh, In the Club by 50 Cent. Uh -huh. Like right when the song first dropped. And that was like oh. the first hip hop <laughs> song I ever heard. And like, I remember they were in their room, like watching it on their computer and would not let me and him in. Cause they're like, yeah, y'all can't watch this. Like it's too like, <laughs> Next older, level. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. and we ended up like sneak watching it anyways. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, like this is it. Uh -huh. And then like shortly after that, I found Lollipop by Lil Wayne. That's oh, a repeat. Classic. And then like, since then I was just like, I love this. Like, this is amazing. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, the reason I like hip hop above anything else is like, it just makes you feel something because most of the time artists are speaking either personal experiences, emotional experiences, or anything that you can really relate to. And like, I know if I'm sad, if I'm happy, if I'm celebrating, there's a song in hip hop that I can relate to about anything. Mm -hmm. Anytime I win something, congratulations about Post Malone, boom, Call just like that. Instant. You know what I'm saying? It's exactly. like, not that you can't, draw those emotions or those things from other genres of music i just like how it goes in terms of hip-hop like the beats like just everything like i don't know the thumping speakers the mm -hmm. energy the realness the yeah. just i just love all that bro and it's, i'm just hooked i'm hooked and i just love how it brings people together like you can be a nerdy a nerdy kid and love hip-hop or you could be the most you know what i'm saying bad ass if i'm allowed to say that like yeah, you're good, you're good. kid in the world uh -huh. and love hip-hop and y'all could be best friends over the fact that you love the same artist right and like that's just so so cool to me and i don't i don't personally see that happening with like country or anything like that so and that's true because first of all i can't you know we, the music we used to play was <laughs> we used to have the place jumping and i remember i one of the people that noah put me on who is he's you know still kind of like mind-boggling that he's gone but juice world is just like with him it's just like and like i remember when he was telling me some of the songs of how he did those like freestyle and just the fact that like to me it just always like anything amazes me from like for example like we talk about tattoos all the time like i remember before i got my tattoo i see noah's and it's like i love seeing people put together different things when it's clothes tattoos and it's okay if it can't fit me but like somebody thought to themselves like okay this, you know, this white shirt goes well with my sneakers and it goes well with this. And like, they created themselves from it. So, but with music, like being able to see how some people are able to like put the words together and as well be able to create like a story is it's crazy. Like it's, crazy. it's like, it's literally, it's like, it's yes, it's something that you can start. You can start today, but it's not something like you become a map, I mean, you know, you don't become a master at it one day. Like mm -hmm. you're still getting better and better because you're literally creating like stories pretty much for people. <laughs> <laughs> like it's crazy um but with that i mean you of course with anything like you know there's always the struggles like there's always struggles everything i feel like if you if you come up so fast then i mean that's still good but if you if you haven't really gone through the struggles then you don't know the feeling of, of like you know if i don't do this for example so i guess what's what are some of, what are some things you've had to overcome and still overcoming um and then how has that helped you now and 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 moving forward yeah. Um, so yeah, like you said, like people it in, in this day and age it's honestly so I don't wanna say easy, but it's easier to mm -hmm. blow up than it's ever been in any facet of music sure. because of social media. Exactly. So it's like half of you wants to beat yourself up because you're like, dang, my music's good. Mm -hmm. I'm throwing these banging shows. Why am I not famous? Right. You know what I'm saying? Or like, why am I not at this higher scale level? And then you sit there and you're like, dang, like, what am I doing wrong? Blah, 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 blah. But on the flip, it's like, sure, I'm not an overnight success or and will never be at this point. But it's like, if I was, there's a lot of things I would have been missing that I feel like if I would have had that moment, I wouldn't have been able to sustain it because it came so fast. Like mm. if the first song I ever made blew me up, I would not have been prepared for everything that came with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at this point, since I've got three out, uh, two, three albums out the way, a mm -hmm. bunch of singles, I got a track record of shows. 
I know how basically everything works. So it's like if we were to blow up right now, I know we'll be able to sustain it. I know what it takes to stay up there. And I know all that stuff. So it's like, I'm glad to have the knowledge and like be at a point where like, I know it's going to come and I don't mind putting in the work to get it there. Mm. Because sometimes it's what you got to do. Not everybody gets lucky enough to just <laughs> blow up out of exactly. thin air. Um, but like, a, and, and plus we'll blow up with the backing. We'll blow up with being able to do shows and not have to have somebody else bring people to it. Mm -hmm. or we'll be able to drop a song that's already good quality and already good everything and you won't have to go do too much to it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I feel like at this point, we're just like a, a hidden like gold mine mm -hmm. that once somebody mines enough and discovers is going to be like, oh my <laughs> God, I need it. And uh -huh. like, just pick us up because we have everything you can need. A merch guy, six artists, throwing our own shows, releasing our own music. So it's like just waiting, honestly, till the right eyes get there. And sure, it gets stressful, like to wait because no one loves waiting and not knowing what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's motivating because it makes you want to keep working hard until you get there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Dropping it, dropping it, dropping it, man. That's dropping it. Um, no, dude, I mean, you, you said it. Like, it's like, even with me, with what I do is like working with like businesses are doing everything. Like I always, like there's people were in like different groups. So like, you know, we were talking with the whole studio stuff that came, like instead of going to buy clothes or anything like that, I like use like 90% of it to get into a group to learn from someone. This dude is, you know, his name is Iman, 19 year old, right? In London, crazy story of how he came from Russia and everything, does what I do marketing wise does $100,000 a month profit with his agency. And then he also teaches people to start their own agencies. That business does 150 k a month. And he takes the money from that and builds schools in Nepal. So he already has, he's built six schools where 750 kids get to go to school because of him. That, that's the go. This kid, <laughs> it, he, he dropped out of high school. Dropped out of high school and and then he also has a really nice clothing brand, which the clothes from this week. So I'm, I'm ready for those. But that's the goat, man. It's, it's crazy, like being able, being in that group of being able to like, like you, like with people, of course, there's, you know, you have your different groups of friends, right? You have your groups of friends that you, that you hang out with, but there's some people where you hang out with for different reasons. And to some people, they might say, well, that's kind of like shallow, but it's like, you know, you really have to understand you can't, friends are great to have, but you want to be around people. And I know you, Valerie, you, you take this to heart. Like, you got to be with people who, of course, who are either better than you and you can be able to learn from them, but also people mm -hmm. that are going to, like, lift you up. Because you don't want to be around people who are negative and everything like that. Because then it's like, I used to think it was woo-woo, but if that energy, if you're in the room with negative energy, then it's like, mm -hmm. what's the point, you know? Oh, yeah. Exactly. But so, I mean, with you, you talk about, like, Lost Generation, how it came up and and the movement behind it. But... And I know you've thrown some shows, so just kind of explain to me, like, you know, what are some things that you've learned from throwing shows? You know, what's what's kind of the, we'll, we'll talk about the future towards the end, but what's kind of yeah, what's some things you've learned for, about throwing shows? And then how did that first show feel like? Because the first one is always the, the best, yeah. the worst, the craziest, everything. Um, so honestly, the first time I ever threw a show, mm -hmm. I was 16. What? And uh, we were looking for an opportunity, and there was this local artist named Nance that's from the area. Yes. And he was doing a show, and I was able to network with him and get him to give us an opportunity to come and open for him. And I remember I was at the Y working at Jones Dairy, uh -huh. and he called me on the phone, like broke everything down, said he was going to give us the opportunity. And I, I, like, it was so small at the time, but I was like, yeah, I'm ready to leave work right now. Like, I'm about to clock out. I'm to go do this. And uh, I remember telling all the guys, and, like, it was so hype, and I was excited. And then I had never even performed before then. So not only did I Whoa. just secure our first show, this is legitimately our first show. What? Um, <laughs> And, like, at the time, we didn't really have, like I said, we had just started up as just me, Jaheel, and Brody in the group at the time. We hadn't got the twins or Emilio in it yet. Mm -hmm. So this is still very raw and very new. Um, we didn't have much of a following or that much good music, but still had this opportunity. Exactly. So people that were kind of on the brink of, do I support these dudes? Are they taking it serious? Saw that we had a show and we're kind of like, okay, like uh -huh. maybe they're actually doing something. Listen, they're getting opportunities. And uh, that helped a little bit. 
And then from there, I just loved it. I was on stage and like, it's just an adrenaline rush. Like you really, it's like a natural, like high off of just like feeding off of energy and like life. And like, I don't know, it's just like crazy being up there and having people just, I don't know, you just feed off of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, from that, like over the years, like I've started to throw my own shows, like without opening for people. Mm. So then after that, I transitioned into, okay, I think we have enough support mixed with some other people where we can do this ourselves. So then I got into that, was throwing our own headlining shows for a little bit. And then this past year in 2019 and end of 2018, I actually expanded that idea and threw shows just for local artists without mm. my group or without me even on the show. Like legitimately emailed venues back and forth, got oh. dates, planned the lineup, gave people that I personally am supportive of and mm. in their corner shows, booked it for them, opp gave them opportunities and like tried to give back because I know that if I had that when I was in their position, it would have excelled where I was at and helped me. Mm. So I try to do that for them, but it is a double-edged sword sometimes because you got people that me as a promoter and don't take me serious as an artist mm -hmm. or people that take me serious as an artist but then don't okay. come to the show unless they see that my group is performing on it mm -hmm. so it's like that's the only thing i'm trying to break the stigma of right now is like i want to build my personal name up with the lost generation to the point where someone can say noah's throwing a show i know nobody on the lineup but because Noah's throwing it or the Lost Generation's throwing it, I know it's going to be lit and I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Because when I get to that point, then I feel like I'm super powerful because let's say you are an artist. I support you. I think your music's good and you've never done a show. And I can get you on a show and you don't have to bring any fans, anybody to come. Mm -hmm. And you can just show up to 100 people out there just because I was able to throw the show system it's a system that's the important thing and like that's have. so that's so dope to me because yeah. it's like sure it may only be a hundred people but it's like that's better than nothing if you walk away with 10 real fans from that that is a win and it's like that's just what i love doing and like just shows as a whole i love doing them because it just i love bringing people together in that mm -hmm. aspect and like you just drop it at the door. If you're mad, leave it at the door. If you're sad, leave it at the door. If you're happy, mm -hmm. leave it at the door. Because when you walk in, it's like a whole experience. And like, you're just in the moment. Like, it's just like, you don't got to worry about nothing. You could just come, have fun. No one's going to judge you. You can be yourself. You can wear whatever you want, drink mm -hmm. whatever you want, uh, sing whatever you want. Right. And like, just come and just be you. And that's what I really want to do. I'm doing it now on like a minuscule scale, but like my overall goal is just like to keep doing that. Like I love shows for that reason that it brings people together, makes them happy and like just gives them an opportunity to just be them. Cause a lot of times people either feel judged and they can't be themselves or, you know what I'm saying? This, that, and the third, or they're going through something like we all go through stuff, pull up and I promise you'll leave happier than you did when you came. Mm -hmm. And like, that's just the experience I want to give is like, when you come, you're going to remember that because you came, that helped you get through something or get over something or get past something. And that's the type of like stuff I want to instill in people. So come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Preaching right now. It's not even Sunday. Come on, dude. <laughs> hey, that's it. Yeah. I mean, look, I, when all this passes, cause I know, first of all, there's not going to be we talked about it a little bit before this, you know, if you want, I'm going to keep saying this until it passes, man. Look, if you don't pick up one skill, read at least one page of it. You don't even have to read a page. Just read one sentence. Of just a book. do something. Just something like look, watch a YouTube video on how to start a song. Watch a YouTube video on how to, how to make, how to tie that shirt. If you don't walk out of we a month and 14 days where it's like, we talked about it. It's not like you're at home grounded and everybody else is still going doing their thing everyone is at home. everyone's grounded everyone's yeah. grounded right now so if you work if you literally take this time let's just say worst comes to worst we get another month okay we get another month that means you had 60 days you have 30 30 60 days to work on a skill and you know that the world has not gone anywhere yet so when you come out of this 
It could be music. You could be promoting. You could find out your, so I was telling, you know, one of our really good friends, he's really good at like just drawing and just an artistic person, got a tattoo done. A dude is amazing. Like he's like, I'm getting tattooed next week. And it's like, it's, it's, it's the whole thing. It's like, it doesn't even have to be a skill where you look like one of my things that I started doing was like, I, used to, I worked out, but like I started like running or walking every day, but like meditating like 10 minutes a day, like makes you so, so peaceful. Cool. like, yes, like that's what I'm gonna do after this. So like I just lying down man. and, and just lying down, have a little, uh, insets turned on, turn it on. And oh, then yeah. just like, don't just lie down and really do everything. <laughs> exactly. I was telling my brother, one of these days he's going to walk in. I'm just going to be floating. Like, I'm not even going to be exactly. pressing the keyboard. It's going to be pressing itself. But anyways, just take this time. Because this time is, this is literally something that we know, nobody thought would ever happen. And hopefully it never happens. But if it never happens again, like, imagine being able to say that, you know, 20 years ago, like, when kids are asking you or, like, when your friends is like, man, like, no, what'd you do? You know, like, what do you, you know, what'd, what'd you do back in 2020 when everything locked up? It's like, no, dude, that this time... No, was not sleeping in till 1 p.m., 2 p.m. every day. He was actually either learning new vocabulary to put it in his words, beats, everything like that. So oh, yeah. um, with that, you know, you've, you've explained the, the goals of, you know, your current blocks, what you are being an, not only just an artist, but also an entrepreneur, um, as well as the last generation happening. I guess the next one is, is, you know, for the community was a big one. And this is a person that you put me on to and guess and this is a person that I know is a very figure for you. Um so with Claudio Nueve when he um passed away, like what and again to the best of your ability, like who is who was that? I'm, I'm not even gonna explain it, just you go to explain no, yeah. him, him to you. Yeah so Claudio Nueve man, uh well to What's me he's name, a big bro. Uh you said what? What was his real name? His name? Uh Xavier Dennis. Okay, go ahead, my bad, yeah. Um to me, he was a big brother. Uh, to everybody, he was an amazing artist. Uh, I can say, like, I know a bunch of talented artists, a bunch of people that I think are going to be absolutely huge and just not on this not blown up yet. Mm -hmm. And out of all of them, and not just because, no bias, no nothing, that was the most talented person I've ever met in my whole entire life. Um, he would go in the studio, hear a beat, all right, going in. No phone, no mm -hmm. words, just sit there, headphones on come up with a whole song and i promise you it was fire wow. like this dude mastered music to the point where he was speaking just straight out of his mind and making cadences words rhymes like whole entire three minute two verse two hook songs in like 30 minutes just walks in i feel this i feel this way about something boom i'm putting it on a track and uh his energy was the type where like you'd walk in a room and you're with him and you would feel him in the room. Like, yeah. even if you had no clue who he was, you would think to yourself like, yo, like, I know this dude's yeah. like something. Like he gotta be like, you could just feel that. And um, yeah, uh, what else can I say? I guess like how did, and I, just side note is what you did say. I remember after the show, they had a little get together at, at the Lost House. And I remember like, that was the first time I like seeing him like face to face. And you did say it, cause I'm gonna be talking like a minute or two, just kind of let him know it was first concert. He was like, yo, that's crazy. And just like the energy, because I remember when he walked in, it's not because everyone said, oh, it's Claudio Nueve's coming in. But like, I remember walking in and you, you said it the best, like you get that, you know, like somebody's here. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you know when you yeah. walk into a room and you feel that like, oh snap, like, okay, he's a, he's a person. Um, and again, to the best of your ability, I, I guess, losing like a person like that how has that affected you and, and, and people around you and, and what has that done for you moving forward yeah um well <clears throat> before i get into that it's definitely been a blessing to have been able to know this dude and like give like do shows with him do music stuff with him mm -hmm. um and that's one th like i pride myself in is that when he was here i did everything i feel like i could to help this dude and like to support him and give him shows and do all this stuff so like i always feel good about that um but it, honestly like losing someone that close to me like i want to say it was easier but like i lost my dad when i was young mm -hmm. so like the idea of like being that close with somebody that you see every day and then them just not being there i guess was kind of like easier for me to adjust to then other people that have never experienced like a substantial loss on that aspect. 
Um, but for me, like, it was super crazy because I had literally just picked him up from the airport. Like, literally oh, just wow. picked this dude up from the airport, went to the studio, ate Chipotle with him, made a song with him. Wow. And then three days later, wake up to knowing he's gone. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like that to me was more so the fact that like at first I felt guilty because I'm like, yeah, these two, three days after that, he asked me to see him and I didn't make it a priority to go see him. Not that I didn't want to. I was busy doing other things and stuff like that. So like you go through the guilt of like, dang, now I should have like went and seen him, blah, 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 blah. But how I look at it is I just try to carry like everything he instilled into me and just keep that going because I feel like he's with me and watching what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I want to be able to make him proud and like carry on his legacy and that's a big thing that I'm doing too is like through the shows and through music I want like my personal and the group success to spread light on him and like his music and who he was and stuff like that the same way I would have done if he was sitting right here Mm -hmm. um so it's like at this point i feel like i got something to live for and that's mm -hmm. motivating to me because i'm not only gonna fail myself but i'm about to fail him and i refuse to do that mm -hmm. so it's like i am more not that i wasn't motivated before but i'm more motivated than ever to be successful mm -hmm. in whatever way it is because i know that's what he would want and if i didn't do that i'd be failing him and i'm not gonna do that um but yeah, if anyone's watching, stream Cloudy Nueve. We're about to keep dropping merch and shirts and stuff for him. All that goes to his family. So if you see a shirt, buy a shirt. If you see the music, stream it. Mm -hmm. That's all I could ask of y'all. And one day, everyone's going to know about him. Promise. Man, that, I appreciate you sharing that because I know some stuff like that can kind of get tough. But No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that... It, I mean, again, I'm a person where I also repeat a lot of things, but that's why there's... For me, like in growing up, middle school, high school, and I'll tie it back together, I was a person to where like I was cool with the jocks, the, the soccer, the, you know, football, the nerdy kids. We'd be playing festival. You could touch me, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Yu-Gi-Oh! collection that I had this deep. But after high school, like I noticed like I wasn't, I didn't really know myself. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, you know, you go through a point in time where you're giving your time to a lot of people. But after high school, going to a time where everybody's moved away and um, I was told myself, uh, you have to be, sometimes you have to be by yourself to find yourself was a time where I've like found being around people. Like I try, you can guess, try to have good friends to be around, but I don't try to be around everyone all the time because I've already, I already know what that means. Like I already know how- You can't be. Yeah, yeah, like it's, 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 it's like, and it's bad. Sometimes like I've gotten better, but like there's sometimes where I'm, I'm with people and I'm like, I could be doing something right now. Like for you, I'm pretty sure you could be in some situations. You're like, that's a four songs I could have done right there. <laughs> but no, yeah, you got to be careful with your time. And stuff. Exactly. Yeah. But, but it's the, the point bringing back is that like, I'm very happy that everything circumstances that came across a person like you, because you're a person to where you always have a mission that you're going to and a mission that you need to accomplish. And it doesn't matter if it's, it's not like a gigantic, yes, you do have these gigantic goals and then, then smaller and smaller and smaller, but it doesn't matter if it's every day coming in, you want to make someone smile. Then, you know, every week you want to, you want to do X. So applauding you for that. Um, you know, I guess as, you know, as we finish up, um, what are some words of, you know, the last two questions is what, what are words of advice of like, you know, again, we're all, yes, you know, there's things that we want to do for ourselves. You know, we want to take care of our, our moms, dads, you know, family, everyone. Um, but we also want to like be able to inspire the youth to be able to imagine if now, like imagine if you could go back to yourself and tell all the mistakes that you've done to be able no, to go over that. Sure. Yeah. So what are some words of advice for the youth that you can be able to give them, whether they wanted to go to become an artist or to be an entrepreneur just in general? Cause. Oh yeah. Um, well, anything I could say is that we live in an era where you can literally do whatever you want. Say that again. Say that again. So <laughs> the first advice I could give anybody is figure out what you want to do. Make sure that you love it and that you're passionate about it so that you don't invest time into it just to give it up. Then do that, push it on the internet and put your focus and your heart into that. Because at the end of the day, you can do that. If you believe I have the best nail polish, let people know that. Put it on Instagram, promote it to your friends, buy my nail polish, literally whatever you wanna do. You are one retweet, 
one story post, one anything away from the right person seeing it and you blowing up like you've never seen. You could get signed by Kylie Cosmetics or whatever the heck off of one, just, you know what I'm saying? One person seeing it. Um, another thing would be is like, believe in yourself. And if you know that do something, like who cares what other people say or like what their expectations are. And I know that's hard, but like I'll use myself as an example. Like when I was in high school, I used to be fat. And I remember in my head being mm -hmm. like, I'm gonna lose weight and I know I'm not gonna look like this forever. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I, the first time I put a bun in my hair, I used to wear a bun, no one liked the bun. But I was like, it's okay, because when I'm skinny and I have a bun and I have tattoos, all these people hating on me right now are gonna, all the girls are gonna think I look good, all the dudes are gonna think I'm cool. So like, that's what pushed me through high school, honestly was like, okay, I may not be where I want to be right now. And that, and I can see why people might hate on me right now, but I know it's not always going to be like that. And I've personally seen people come around now and be like, oh my gosh, hey Noah, da 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 well, we all like, do yeah, that. Bro, <laughs> like in high school, y'all didn't want to give me, give me a hug. So it's like, it really is crazy. Like you just gotta, no one's going to have more faith in you than you. So you just got to make sure to always keep that faith in yourself. And like, yeah, you can do whatever you want in the age of the internet. You just got to find what you do. And then, yeah, I said, and then don't ever feel like you need like school or anything that you don't feel like is a good like thing of your time, like invest your time wisely. And like, as long as you're doing something that you care about and that you see you having a career in, there's no wrong answer. If you feel like, dang, why would I go to school all day long when I could be marketing my business? Or why would I do, why would I work this job when I could be painting pictures for my uh, gallery or something? Just make sure you invest your time into what you love and that's what will carry you through anything. Cause the, you know, we're gonna get time back. So like, don't waste it. I guess mm. it's like the end of the thing. Like it's never gonna come back. Anytime you're not doing something or not, trying to get better you're just wasting time and like you said earlier this is the perfect time to do something even me i haven't recorded in my room in years i go to the studio i can't go to the studio because it's shut down so i bought studio equipment and put a studio in my room so that i could learn and get better and improve as an artist and figure out how to do some of the little clicky clicky stuff that i never have to do because my engineer does it so it's like, that's what I'm trying to do. Cause I hate just sitting around and watching Netflix or playing 2k. Like I like to be stimulated and sure I have a bunch of stuff planned for when this ends. Cause I can't do what I mainly do right now, which is gather people in a concert setting because everyone has to be six feet apart and stuff like that. But, uh, just plot and invest your time and what you love. And I'm telling you, it will pay off mm. like it will. Like it, it'll pay off. It, 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 you just gotta speak it into existence. Like, tell yourself you're great. Whatever it takes. Look in the mirror. Tell somebody I'm gonna do this, and then do it. You can ask. You can ask this man. I've told him multiple times. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm gonna do this. Uh huh. It might have taken me a little longer than I thought, but, but yeah. I've done it. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's and that's one thing. Like I've noticed. Like when you look at everyone who's like hustle and the grind, artists, like music artists especially like hip hop rap artists are the best people of, of belief, like, like the affirmations, like people who literally like, and, and a lot of people think it's woo woo. When you tell, when you wake up in the morning and you have some affirmations that you tell yourself, like, man, I'm going to be great. Like, I'm actually going to be, you know, I'm going to lose this weight. I'm, I'm, you know, the people are going to be looking at me different. And it's like, people might think of it as woo woo. And it's not, of course, we're not saying that you're going to wake up tomorrow. If you just wake up every day and say, you're going to be great, you're going to be great. You still have to put in the work. But, oh, yeah. but that affirmation, like, it's, it's crazy. And some people find it by reading books, but some people find it other ways. But I've learned, like, in the past six months where I've gotten to, it's been because the four-year journey has been good. But the past six, eight months of actually drilling in those affirmations di daily, nightly, and even if it's a little bit just lying down in your bed and you just visualize yourself, you know, visualize yourself paying off your mom's bills. Pay, you know, you visualize yourself, you go into the car lot, and being able to say, you know, like, hey, you know, 
how can I help you? And then, then you're just like, well, I'm here to buy my mom a car. And then you pull it up to oh, your mom's yeah. house and she, and just like those visualizations, because then you're like, oh, that's how it feels. I just have to do the work. But I'm telling mm-hmm. you, it's, he said it, it's important. You visualizing it is, is important because. Can't lose track of your goals. Exactly. At the end of the day, yes, what, what we're doing is hard. You know, like it's, it's hard for you having to, to go to the venues and then go do this and go do that. But honestly, the only way you can lose there's a book that I read called Infinite Game. Like literally the only way you can lose, first of all, the, the only person that you're really fighting is you. Like that is the, that's the only person you're fighting. And the only way you can lose is if you stop. <laughs> that's, that's literally if you think about anything. Noah, the only way he can lose right now in what he's doing with music and entrepreneurship is just stopping. But the moment you stop, the regret that is always in your head is massive. Oh, yeah. Because you know, dang, I've come this far. Like, what just to give done? it up yeah like what and people say oh man like what happens if your music stuff doesn't work then you have to like it takes you five ten years and you have to like go work somewhere else all right i'll get two jobs like what then what else like what if that fails then i know what to do so it's yeah understand yeah. that literally like i mean that see that's what i'm talking about we could talk for a long time but it's just understand to yourself literally if you the only way to lose anything that you're doing is if you stop so before we keep going man um again first of all I, every episode, I guess, even though it's only two, is amazing because, like, I'm starting to learn about people that I know, but, like, actually get to know them and, like, the mind of what they're doing. And, and it's cool because, like, having the opportunity to be part of your journey, like, being able to have a show from you, and that's my first show and how that was a movie. Um, but I guess what, you know, what, what can we look forward to? I know there's something coming, something coming next month, but what are some plans of, you know, Noah and Lost Generation? Yep. And I'm going to get into that, but while this is on my head, I'm going to say it real quick. One last thing to the youth, too, is do not be afraid to fail. You should want to fail, and if you fail, you're doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. All failure is done is to put there and challenge you to see how mentally strong you are to bounce back from that. I've failed multiple times on whether it's a bad verse on a song or a show that didn't have the turnout I wanted. And if I had have sat there and been like, well, never making music again. Well, never throwing a show again. I'd have never made it to the next step. And it's like, you're going to have obstacles and barriers that stop you. And like adversity and failure is like the best way to be successful. And you can't be successful without facing failure or adversity because that's a part of the game. And another thing is like, if anybody that watches this, whether I inspire them or you've already been inspired and you want to be an artist, I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just saying make sure you're prepared because social media may have you think it's easy and this glamorous lifestyle where people are fans of you and they come to your shows and they stream your music. But I promise you it is not as easy as it looks and it is extremely hard. And for every one person that drops a heart, there's three more that hate on you. So it's like this, like, hold on, I'm stuck on words. Like, Choosing this path can break a person if you're not strong enough to handle like the failures and adversities and the hate and everything that comes with it. And I don't want anybody to think I can be an artist and then start to receive that side of it and then hate music because of it. So if you want to do this, which anybody can, I suggest it to anybody, it's amazing and an awesome way of life. Just be prepared for what comes with it because I don't want to see anybody ever having to hate it because of some stupid hater on the internet or anything like that but back to what matters Mm -hmm. upcoming stuff like i said all i've done is plot 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 like i was supposed to do a show literally right before this stay at home order and all that stuff Mm -hmm. um got on the way had to cancel that um i'm working on a festival my goal is that i can do it good enough to compete well, not compete, but in my eyes, compete with Dreamville Fest. Mm -hmm. Um, Just in terms of I'm going to be an independent local dude throwing a festival in the heart of downtown Raleigh, outside with a bunch of my friends, a bunch of artists that a lot of people don't know about. And it's going to be rocking. And people people are going to see it and be like, okay, what's going on in downtown Raleigh? Mm -hmm. And then I plan on making the newspaper and the news and everything else for doing this. And having it to a point where like Hopscotch Festival or Dreamville Festival is like, dang, you did okay. this on your own? Mm-hmm. Come freaking <laughs> help me out with my festival or something. 
um, and <clears throat> more so just shed light on not only what I do personally with the shows, but on my group and with everybody involved, because it's going to be all NC businesses, all NC vendors, all NC artists, um, and just try to give back to everybody in North Carolina, because I feel like we're up next. Um, music wise, we're about to drop a bunch of singles that's hopefully leading up to an album. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next one is called Pursuit of Happiness. It's got me, Emilio, and Brody. That'll be dropping May 8th. Hopefully, right. this will be out by then. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, yeah, this will be uh, but, this will be out this will be out tomorrow. So, I'll but I'll make sure to put the all the links will be at the podcast as well as SoundCloud, uh, Apple Podcast, Google Play Podcast, and on YouTube. No, that's awesome. But yeah, it's called Pursuit of Happiness. We're going to start promoting it soon. Y'all get a sneak peek. Um, it's coming out May 8th, all streaming platforms. Um, and then after that, we're going to try to do like every two weeks, keep dropping, keep consistent um, and doing stuff like that. Visuals coming, just doing everything we can. It is kind of hard with the virus because we like, like, you can't really do a video without groups of people. You can't right. gather in groups. You can't do a show because no groups. So, like, right now, a lot of our stuff we want to do is in here and on paper, and we're just waiting to be able to execute it. But we are going to be giving y'all new music because that can be done during corona um, and stuff like that. So just keep looking forward, and you know the Lost Boys going crazy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on. Well, look, before we head out, we just did this for a couple minutes, too. But it's amazing because it's just talking. Like, even though we have some stuff that we usually go throughout, it's just talking. Um, but you know, last thing, I guess, where can people find you? Social media, what are the links, everything like that. <clears throat> yeah. So you can find me on all social media, literally every single thing, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, whatever at you already Noah. Y O U mm -hmm. already Noah we'll with two H's. Here. Okay. And then you can follow the group on Instagram at lost L O S T period Jen G E N and then Twitter at T L G M G, which stands for the lost generation music group. Um, and yeah, that's where you can find updates on shows, music, content, just pictures of us, videos of us, mm -hmm. keep up with us in any possible way that you would want to. Um, and yeah, appreciate everybody watching. Appreciate everyone's support. Uh, appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the freaking you. goat over there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> But yeah, man, it's crazy. Perfect. Is it, and is it okay if people like reach out to you, like ask you any questions? Oh yeah, like that, so I, cool? I encourage that. I encourage that. If anybody needs any question, musically wants me to review their song, uh, wants me to help them with the show, literally whatever it is, just say hey, I watched your podcast with uh, Manuel or Sushi. Uh, I would like some advice on blah 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 blah. Shoot that to me. Messages. I'll get back to you. Promise. Um, and yeah, I'm here. That's what I want to do is just help. So let me know. Perfect. All right. Well, everybody, just going to go ahead and get ready to sign off. Again, all those links will be, we been posting every, I think over like a hundred some people watched, watched the other ones. So this one's going to, we're going to blow it up as well too. But just look it out. Look for it. Um, all the links will be in the description. And again, if you have any questions, please ask the man. All right.